the idea is that there then, as here now, uh, the, the effort to create a sense of crisis uh, is arising out of genuine tensions within the healthcare system. The tensions are there, they're always there for reasons that are pretty straightforward in the way that healthcare is provided and funded. And what we're listening to now is a, is a classic Naomi Klein exercise of let's create a crisis so that we can try to stampede people into making political changes that will change the balance of power within the system and give advantage to the people who are beating the crisis drum. Now they've ramped up the criticism because they're trying to get more money into the system, that's what privatization is about, but not at the cost of people at the higher income groups because you want to move it off taxation, move it back onto the patients. So you move the burden down the income distribution, you move access up the income distribution, and you increase the overall flow of funds. Well, that makes perfectly good sense if you're either a provider of health care who's not too concerned about social issues, or if you are a high income person, or if you are a drug company, or you, if you are setting up a private clinic, you want more money to flow in. There is a campaign to dismantle Medicare in Canada. It's organized, it's incredibly well moneyed, it's uh, supremely connected, um, and it's very aggressive at this point. Um, and it's made up almost entirely of, um, of vested interests, people who have direct um, uh, monetary interests in private healthcare companies and insurance companies and other co companies that benefit from uh, privatization. We have, as Bob indicated, um, forces that want to convince us that we need to panic, uh, want to convince us that, that we can't afford the future and we can't afford healthcare as it is and you certainly can't afford baby boomers like me in a few years, so we better pony up and get a bunch of private money into the system. The system of health, because it is public, is also an object politique and that the way we come to make sure that the politics arrive to take care of the rationality of where we go, of what are the objectives, est très très difficile, particulièrement dans un système parlementaire comme celui qu'on a, où les groupes d'intérêt sont très habiles pour s'assurer qu'on touche pas à leurs intérêts. If there is pressure, and there should be pressure, to make a better healthcare system, so that you can more reliably and in a more timely fashion get the care that you need, that will not happen unless there's full engagement of the frontline workers in, in rejigging the system in looking for savings, in addressing quality. Is this idea that healthcare is really only a cost, and we never talk about it really as a benefit. Um, but for those of us who believe in access to healthcare, in access to life-giving, life-enhancing, life-saving care as a basic human right, we need to understand Medicare in Canada really is a huge benefit. It's a huge social wage. In fact, it transfers about $130 billion each year from uh, the wealthy and the healthy to everybody in free services as we need them. That is the economic mechanism of Medicare in Canada. And without that, we would have a society that would be fundamentally different than the one that we live in. It would be much more inequitable. We would face much graver suffering. We already do face suffering when we're sick. It's hard enough to be sick. It's much harder to be sick in a society that doesn't provide a single-payer public uh, health care system. And we would be facing fights for equality on all kinds of levels that we couldn't even really imagine um, having grown up under a public health care system in Canada. I think one of the things, and, and, and I appreciated Natalie's uh, statement, was whoever controls the language will control the debate. And so I think part of it is, uh, it seems paradoxical, is turning the language around to say, this is really about the quality of care. Because we really care about the quality of care, and we can deliver on the quality of care. Thank you so much. Unfortunately, we've gone over time, so I'd like to thank Bob Evans, Dave Meehan, Contrantiopoulos, Natalie, Mara, and Bob Willard. Thank you so much for joining us, and thanks to you, too, for your questions.